Thank you for joining us today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to cut up a rabbit so you can roast them whole or you can cut them up into sections and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. I'm also going to be doing the drawing for the tray back knife at the end of this video. So stay tuned and see if you're the winner. If you want to see how we process out this rabbit, you can go check out the video right there. And I had a couple people ask, why is it that you put your rabbit into an ice water bath for 24 to 48 hours? The reason that we do an ice water bath is one, it rests the meat out of rigor because if you freeze or you cook a rabbit that um, has not rested, it's gonna be a little bit tougher textured that goes for chickens, turkey, pretty much anything. So if you can rest your meat for about 48 hours before freezing or cooking, that's gonna give you a nice soft meat. Also, it draws out any blood. Now I'm going to show you how much blood was drawn out. I had already rinsed this rabbit. It didn't have any visible blood on it, but I've had it resting in ice water for 48 hours and I'm gonna show you just how much blood was drawn out of that meat. Some folks say they don't like rabbit because it's really gamey. That gamey flavor often comes from a wild rabbit that's very lean has, and has eaten just natural vegetation. But also, that gaminess can come from not getting the blood drawn out of your meat. That's gonna give you a much gamier flavor. So if you don't like that, and you want your rabbit to taste much more, um, very much like commercial chicken, something that is a familiar flavor to you, you're going to wanna put it into an ice water bath for about 48 hours. Let me show you how much blood we drew out of meat that appeared clean. So this one rabbit fit into this mixing bowl pretty well. I'm gonna show you what the water looks like. Pop the top. Take a look at the amount of blood in that water. Pretty gross, huh? So that's definitely gonna flavor your meat if you cook it before getting all of that out. So I'm just gonna drain it and then give it a good rinse. We are going to get to cutting this rabbit up and then I'm gonna show you a really good and simple Hawaiian style marinade that works for chicken but is also really great for rabbit. So when you either purchase a rabbit or you process one out yourself, it's going to look like this. You've got your back legs, your front legs, this is gonna be your back strap or your loin or your saddle. There's a lot of different names for it. That's where a lot of the meat is. And then you're gonna have these belly flaps. You can roast it just like this. And I do have two different recipe videos that I'll link you to. But if you wanna section this up, you can treat it just like bone-in chicken and it can go into any recipe that you would use chicken in. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this up into sections. Okay, this is what your rabbit's gonna look like. The very first thing I do is position it. I'm going to be featuring the Trayvax knife that we are going to be, I mean, you're gonna get a new one, not this one, this one's mine. But I process the rabbit with this knife and I'm also going to section it up with this knife. So the first thing I do is I put the rabbit on its back. These are the belly flaps. These hold the abdomen together. A little bit of fat inside there. Uh, rabbit fat doesn't taste very good. You're not gonna want that. So the belly flaps, some folks just cut them off and don't use them, but the kids like them. They fry up uh, real crispy if you do them on the grill or if you fry them. And then if you just slow cook them, they're like a real nice thin chewy piece. So we keep the belly flaps. That is up to you. If you don't really like the texture of them, you can add them to um, your bone broth or bone stock when you're doing either rabbit or chicken stock for soup. So we've got our belly flaps. The next thing we're gonna cut off is these front legs. Now these come off real nice. You're just gonna go right into the armpit, okay? Right into the armpit. And then you're gonna cut where you get all of this meat as well. And there you go, that gives you the whole shoulder and it just comes away without any, 
there's actually no um, bone connection there or anything that you have to worry about breaking off. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Find the armpit, put down there. That's gonna free your arm. Flip it around, go right down the neck. There you go. My little guy likes these front arms, so that's usually his cut. The next thing we're going to do is these back legs. The back legs are pretty stiff. You're gonna to wanna to break that open so that you're, you're just nice and wide, just like that. You can just pull it and it, then you're gonna find where the tailbone is, that spine, and you're gonna cut right along there. And that takes it right off. The back leg is actually my favorite cut. So one of these are usually mine, and then one of my kids usually eat the other one, or my husband. So just go along that tailbone. There you go. Now, the next part is getting the back strap, and um, you can call it the saddle or the loin or whatever you call it, but we call it the back strap. So it's this piece right here. This tailbone doesn't really have any meat, so we don't really need that. And then these ribs, are um, there's not any meat around the ribs, and they're not something that you want in your food. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the last rib. You can just kind of feel it. Take your knife. Cut right along where that last rib is. Do the same thing on the other side. Cut up like a V. Flip it on over. That way you can see where the, the meat is up there. And that just pulls right off. Break it right where the vertebrae is. So this rib section, it does have flavor. It does have a little fat. It does have some meat. But again, you don't want these bones. So I save this whole section for when I make bone broth. So I'm going to be putting this aside, and then I will just add it to my bone broth stock. So now we've got our back strap and our tailbone. You don't want that tailbone section. It's just not really any meat on it, and it's just more little bones. I put my knife there and just cut that right off. And again, this can go into any bone broth stock that you have. So there you go. That is the back strap section. Uh, when we cook it, we divide it in two. It just comes off like a big chunk of meat here and a big chunk of meat here. So that'll feed two people right there. Now, if you want to divide up your back strap, you're just going to find where the vertebrae is and you can use a rolling pin or a really sharp cleaver or your hand. Just press straight down. You don't want to saw at it because you don't want bone fragments in your meat. But that'll cut it just clean like that. You've got a spine going down the middle. Again, the meat just comes right off once it's cooked. So that's two really nice cuts right there. So there we have it. These are our cuts. We've got our two sections of back strap. We have our two hind legs. We have our two front legs with the shoulder meat and our side flaps. So for our family of six, this is kind of perfect. My husband and I will probably go with these cuts our older kids, and then our two little ones will probably take a side flap and a front leg. Those are their favorite pieces. So there you have it. It's very easy to section up a rabbit. Now I can use this in any recipe for bone-in chicken. So now that I have my rabbit all sectioned up, I'm gonna show you our very favorite marinade. Again, it's called Calbee Marinade, and it is made with four very simple ingredients. So let me show you how to make that, and we're gonna get this marinating so we can eat it tomorrow night. All right, the Calbee marinade is really simple and it is definitely a crowd pleaser. Get yourself a Ziploc bag or any kind of container, it doesn't really matter. I like to use the bag because I like to squish my stuff around. So it's gonna be one cup of shoyu, which is a Hawaiian soy sauce. It doesn't need to be shoyu, guys, just any kind of soy sauce. We use a nice low sodium one. Pour that into your bag. One cup of soy sauce or shoyu, if you can find it half a cup of white sugar, one third cup of sesame oil, 
Okay, so one cup soy sauce, half cup white sugar, one third cup sesame oil. Then you're gonna use about one tablespoon of uh, ginger. I don't have any fresh ginger, so I have this. It's gingery, it's really gingery. So I'm just gonna squirt some of that in there, about one tablespoon worth. And then you want two tablespoons of sesame seeds. If you don't have any sesame seeds, that's okay. You don't need it. Put that into your marinade. Now you're just gonna grab the top and just massage it. Get all that sugar all mixed up. You can also add some green onion to this if you would like. That's it, that's the marinade. So now I'm gonna stick my pieces in there and I'm going to let it marinate for at least 24 hours. Got our front legs, our belly flaps. The belly flaps are so good in this marinade, they get all chewy and candied. Our back legs, and our good old saddle cuts. Okay, seal your bag up. Mush that all around, make sure that it's all getting coated in your marinade. And then probably just a couple times a day, kind of mush it around, make sure that it's all covered. And we're just going to store that in our fridge for, we're just gonna do 24 hours, 48 hours is really great. And then this can either be um, cooked in an oven, but it is best on the grill if you can do that. That's it. That is our super easy Hawaiian Kelby marinade for Kelby rabbit. Okay, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the biggest uh, thing that we've ever given away. It is a Trayvax knife handmade leather sheath. I'm going to put a link down below to shop this knife or the mini wallets that they make. They're actually a wallet company Everything is sourced in the United States, all materials, handmade in the great old US of A. So this is mine. I featured it in several videos. I love it, it is my favorite knife. This is some lucky persons. So it's new in the box. I just wanna show everyone that we do have it. There we go. Brand new. Oh, I love the way that smells, it smells so good. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this back up and somebody's about to win it now. What I'm going to do is random comment generator and I'm going to show you guys the drawing so that you can see that I have included everybody. I'm going to be filtering out all duplicate comments. So if you left like 10 comments, you're only gonna get credit for one. But, um, and then everybody gets an equal shot for all of those that follow directions. So it doesn't matter what you said, just as long as you commented on this video, let's go see who won. Okay, random comment selector. We're going to put the video URL in here. YouTube comments, filter out all duplicates. 779 comments. Good luck everyone. Jerry Gann, congratulations. Um, so go ahead and send us a private message on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Good Simple Living. Send me a PM. Give me all of your shipping information and we will get your Trayvax knife sent out. Congratulations and thank you so much for everybody that participated. Stay tuned because we have another really cool giveaway going. Check out the video that I posted two days ago and you can enter to win two Groove Rings. Thanks guys.